I want to look at creative extensions. So this was a, um, a pack that was put out with Ableton 10, which was uh, kind of designed to showcase Max for Live's final sort of total integration with Live. So that uh, previously it had been like two softwares, you got Live and then you got Max and the two kind of had some integration. But when they when they fully integrated it was really like part of the same software in uh in version 10 ableton 10 they updated a couple of synths that had previously been available as max for live devices and they added a whole other collection because the integration really brings makes these devices feel more like uh more like natural ableton devices than they used to back when it when max for live was kind of a separate uh, thing so creative extensions is actually all max for live devices but does exactly what they suggest they are extensions to the functionality that kind of inspire some creativity and will definitely um, as you'll see there's there's just a lot there I mean I'm really excited about some of the some of the newer um, the newer devices that came out with Ableton 11 uh, spectral, some spectral devices and some shifting devices, frequency shifting devices, things like that. Some of the updates they did. Um, and specifically th that some of their newer devices really go well with, with a new feature in Ableton 11, which is this concept of chance, MIDI chance and chance tools and the possibility to sort of randomize and create for variation uh, innately through using these chance tools and at a very limited level these kinds of randomization chance probability oriented concepts uh, were already at work in um, follow actions where you could have follow actions uh, between clips within um, your session that you know would have probability of occurring and you could create really cool stuff that way, really cool beats and create variation and interest and unpredictability in your beats just by using those features. But now they've integrated uh, even more chance tools. I'm not going to go into those specifically, but it points to just a larger trend that I think is important as any Ableton producer uh, to be aware of, which is that Ableton now has this strong investment in c the concept of chance, probability, and generative music capabilities that I'm not seeing in other platforms. So we want to explore that more, and these creative tools, uh, these creative extensions, even though they came out with Ableton 10, are actually really closely aligned with that goal of adding more generative, probability-oriented uh, features. All right, so that's all kind of an intro. Let's uh, switch over to my computer, and I'm going to just uh, start by looking at what they have to say about creative extensions. So I definitely would recommend uh, this little video here um, is is just kind of a sales piece, but there's actually a really nice video on uh, YouTube by Elephant where he talks about uh, many of these devices and I think provides a bit deeper context than than this page does. But this will give us a starting point. And uh, gosh, every one of these devices warrants looking at. We will, I, I will in the course of this uh, live stream, make sure we cover all of these and look at some applications for all of them. But let's just start here with uh, melodic steps. So this is just a standard melodic sequencer, a step sequencer. But again, it has this chance component here has these randomizing components with the dice um, and the ability with these numbers here, 12, 7, 5, etc. These allow you to create different links of sequences. So you can create polyrhythmic um, step sequences where uh, you know your elements like octave transpose, velocity, and so on are part of a polyrhythmic architecture. And that can also create a lot of interest in addition to chance and randomizing. So uh, you know, on the surface of it, it's a melodic sequencer, but it's a lot deeper than that. It's still very intuitive to use, and we will definitely look at that. 
pitch hack. Um, I had, I had started working with this when I got Ableton 10 and it's really nice for creating sort of ambient textures. Um, maybe something where you have, uh, like basically what it does is it, it just repitches a source and allows you to blend the original source with the new source. But by doing so, you can kind of explore creating a harmonic um, that is going to, you know, maybe elevate a very simple sound, a very simple synth patch to something more compelling and more interesting. Also using pitch hack like on its own device uh, rack, maybe with some reverb to create um, whatever signal you have, whatever original MIDI clip is playing, then having a separate device chain that's pitching it up or down and then kind of turn, adding some effects to it was, was something that I thought inspired me. I came up with some cool ideas that way. Gated delay is, is, is really pretty interesting. It allows you to basically create a gate sequence and a delay sequence. And then uh, the interaction of these two sequences can create very unusual delay sounds. Um, I think I think actually this is like a delay forward, this is delay backwards, or like a reverse delay. So much more, a much more, um, I don't know, unexpected delay sound than what we're used to. And uh, so you can get kind of like the cool, bouncy, uh, rhythmic effects of delay, but it's a new sound, it's, an, it's a new texture. Color limiter is, um, you know, not, they're not not really going to <laughs> dramatically change anything you do. It's a limiter, um, so you'd use it where you would use a limiter normally. That you you want to uh, constrain peaks and that sort of thing. But this one, you know, apparently adds some color to it. So I, to my ear, it sort of crisps things up a little bit, brightens things up a little bit. So it's called color limiter because it adds color to your signal. Uh, but fundamentally, you'd use it where you'd use a limiter. Now, re-enveloper, this is pretty interesting, very innovative. I've never seen really anything like this. It allows you to divide uh, your incoming signal into three frequency ranges, and each frequency range can have its own envelope along with compression and expansion. So the input signal, I'm just reading here, the input signal is first divided into three adjustable frequency bands, Unlike with compressors, it is the envelope of the signal that can be compressed or expanded. So you're not compressing or expanding uh, like you normally would to, to s change the dynamics of your signal, but rather the envelope. And then, of course, attack and release here are uh, elements in your, in your um, envelope. So we'll listen to that and we'll hear how that sounds, but you can get some very unique sounds. I imagine maybe here you might want to use this um like if you wanted to do you could I'll, I'll see if maybe we can do some transient designing where maybe you have a drum pattern and you want to really do transient design just on snare but that snare is already embedded in a stereo file or something you might be able to hone in on the frequency of that snare with one of these ranges and then uh, make adjustments to the envelope on that to kind of design the transients give it more snap or whatever uh, but we will definitely look at that spectral blur is um, this is kind of a nice extension onto the new spectral time and I think spectral pitch are two new plugs that came with Ableton 11 um, and uh, they all basically deal with uh, manipulating your sound on a spectral basis right so like over the last 10 years there's been a lot of um, push towards using um, I don't know, looking at audio from, from this spectral standpoint, uh, Steinberg had put out uh, spectral layers, which is like a spectral editor. Isotope put out RX, which is spectral editor. Um, there have been more spectral integrations uh, and sort of tools for manipulating and viewing your spectral content in pretty much every DAW. And um, in the context of Ableton, they've chosen to really use this new trend of spectral analysis to, to use it more as effects than just analysis or repair modules. So spectral blur can really be cool. It can be um, used to basically 
totally transform your sound. Uh, whatever the sound source is, you could make it make it really lush pads with it, but you could also kind of use it almost as a reverb, and, and we'll look at that. Then there's a couple of instruments, um, the bass synth and the poly synth. So this is just a mono synth for bass, you know, and you, you have already uh, a broad selection of these uh, just with the built-in devices in Ableton, the, the regular instruments, as with the poly. These are just Macs for Live devices. They are upgraded versions of what came before. So the, these are not brand new, but just kind of extended and enhanced and expanded and improved over um, previous versions of the same idea, a mono synth and a poly synth. So we'll look at those, but you know, I'll spend more time on the effects because I think that's really where the creative extensions um, really pay off when you're doing producing because we've all got plenty of mono synths and plenty of poly synths, I'm sure. And um, I haven't heard anything from either one of these that made me say, oh my God, I got to drop my favorite synths and start using these all the time. I mean, they're fine. They're good sounding synths. Um, it's just, you know, these days I've got more synths than I know what to do with. But these other effects, I think, are, are actually very unique. And I wish that I had them in other DAWs because sometimes I'll be working in a project there and I'll think, oh man, I wish I had that. Uh, I never feel that way about a bass or a polysynth. Oh, I wish my DAW had that because, of course, it always does. So anyway, let's jump right in, okay? So uh, if you have questions, I am going to check my, um, my chat every now and then. Just make sure that uh, if there are any questions, just post them there and I'll try and check every few minutes to see if there's anything new. So uh, let's start off with something real simple here, right? So I'm going to switch to my overhead and um, just basically put together something real simple because um, a lot of these effects don't actually need, you know, like rich, interesting um, source material in order to create rich, interesting source material. Um, and that's why, of course, they are creative extensions. So I'm just going to go add device. Um, I, I'll just go down to sounds and pick something. I want something kind of plucky. I'll go with mallets. There you go. Something like that is, is, is perfect. And I'm going to go to uh, my melodic sequencer. and just put together Just putting together a very basic sequence here. Just something that's mildly musical, right? I don't know what key I'm in. Uh, I'm in the key of C major. So nothing nothing that I'm really trying to put together that's too musical. Um, you know, I'm not trying to get the, the grand final product from a sound this preset that is what I'm looking for. I'm going to be using these creative extensions uh, on top of that. Now, when I am using Max for Live devices, Typically, you're not going to get uh, these cool macros and so much perform so many performance features unless you set them up yourself. And I'll show you what I mean. So if, if I've got this sound, but let's say that I go down to packs and I'm going to go down to um, these creative extensions and I'm going to put so I've got color limiter, the gated delay. Um, let's look at this uh, gated delay. Um, to begin with. All right, so let's say that I, I load this up. What do I have? Okay, I actually have some performable macros already set up, which is great, and that's one of the nice things about Ableton's in-house Macs for Live devices. Sometimes when I get stuff off the user library, as cool as that resource is, I, I then have to kind of figure out, well, what are the features that are performable, and then develop my own macros. Um, a lot of times I'm grateful if I can 
get into a creative state of mind quicker than that. So you can hear now there's this slight reversed delay, right? And the thing is that this gated delay is very pattern oriented. So if we switch over to the software, we can actually see down here the, what what the pattern is. And I'm just going to bring the sound down on um, this so that it doesn't compete too much with my voice. So let's just... Um, So the delay here is definitely So there's this the, the this bottom section is integrating these um reverse delays. It's really audible in this section right here. So listen to it without, right? And I'm gonna go ahead, make this a very, I'm taking the verb off the instrument. So really interesting new pattern. And then you can use this little dice icon here to randomize that pattern. And that's just kind of like a quick way to get some inspiration, you know, when you just want something uh, something fresh. So there's a lot of other features here. Um, obviously, you can change the steps, uh, the, the number of steps that you're dealing with. And by creating some unusual numbers like 11, then you're going to get a... Um, an unusual sounding pattern. You don't really have a polyrhythmic component here because you just have one pattern. But in the melodic sequencer, you could uh, get something like that. So let's also look at um, adding in, I'm gonna switch back to my push, and I'm gonna add in this time uh, the spectral All right, so looking at the audio effects, I'm going to add in this spectral blur. And this time I'll, I'll pick a, a preset, okay? So I'm going to go with spectral ambience. And let's see what that looks like in the software. So I'm going to put that after my gated delay. Okay, so without the spectral ambience, Now let's just listen to the spectral ambience. If I were to bring up the wet, it's almost like in, in this role, it's almost like a reverb, right? Now I get to choose which frequency is being manipulated by the spectral ambience, right? So right now, basically everything has that but if you know that you could use this, if you were using this as a reverb and you only wanted reverb on uh, the higher frequencies, then you can do that. And then you have a wet dry knob here. But you can do even more with it. If you dialed this hit, this freeze button onto a performable pad, you know, or a macro on your push, that could be like a, a cool stutter effect during performance. Basically, it's taking a spectral sample and it's freezing it, right? So a very simple, uh, very simple 
melodic idea originally here in my MIDI clip. Really nothing to get excited about there. But in the effects down here, um, you know, then I have, if I add this gated delay and the spectral ambience, I get some really interesting Really, really interesting um, sounds that, you know, I, don't, I, I like the prospect of being able to get interesting textures from effects because effects tend to be highly performable. I can take them on stage and I can tweak them. Um, when they are buried in a preset, I have to, I feel like I have to work a little harder to, um, to get the performability out of them, unless it's a hardware instrument. So um, anyway, but that's kind of my perspective. Let's go and look up here in Creative Extensions uh, and look at some of these other things. I want to look at this uh, melodic steps, right? So now I've got this. I'm gonna. I'm going to turn off. Uh, I'm going to keep the instrument on, obviously, but I'm going to turn off the gated delay and the spectral ambience and talk a little bit about the melodic steps. So lately I've been working on some uh, electro-pop production, and one of the things that I've been integrating there a lot is sequencing because sequencing just is, I mean, it's, kind of, it's definitely an old-school concept, but I feel like in pop music, it is especially synth pop and electro-pop, it seems like a really reliable way to get something to sound authentic and fresh. And I, I usually find sequencers pretty inspiring because I'll set up a pattern and then I get something that, you know, I'm, I probably wouldn't like, I come up with the pattern, but it generates sounds that are inspiring to me. So let's take, let's take a look at, you know, what's going on here. So there's the original MIDI coming through here, right? Now you'll notice that the melodic sequencer only, the melodic steps only starts playing the sequence when my transport is activated, right? When it's playing. And, and then what's happening here? So if I were to uh, look at my clip here and say, okay, let's, um, I guess I've got eight bars here, right? in my in my clip and down here I can have eight steps uh, right now my steps are if I turn on my metronome I'm getting sixteenths, so right now the melodic steps are uh, sixteenths. Now they're eighths, so I'm just clicking this uh, divide by two or multiply by two. So now I've got quarter notes. So I'm gonna go ahead and bump this up to eight. So now what I'm getting is a sequence that is the same, the, at least this octave sequence. Let me go ahead and, and put them all up to eight. So I'll have a sequence in my MIDI melodic steps device here that equals the number of beats that um, I have in my original clip. Right, so. And now I can use these same dice. This is kind of getting back to that uh, thing I was talking about earlier about how uh, Ableton's been integrating more and more chance-related, probability-related features that are enabling us to make more generative probability-oriented music with Ableton than really with other DAWs that I'm seeing. And this, uh, these little dice icons are, are basically randomizing. So let's say that I've got, and I, I'm going to go back to 16ths.
And I'm going to use the randomizing to randomize my uh, octave transpose and velocity. If I were to, to randomize chance, this chance uh, row down here is actually a value somewhere between 0 and 100 that's deciding whether or not uh, the note on that step will actually sound. So I'm not going to get the same pattern uh, every single time. This is just a great way to, to change up your pattern. So without this, right, this just gets to sounding totally predictable. Of course, it's just, a, it's just an 8-bar pattern repeating. The minute I put melodic steps on it, Now, here, this isn't producing a more melodic outcome, but if I were to have this on drums, for example, uh, let's just go and grab, um, what I'm gonna do is go to packs, and I'm gonna go to, let's see where it would be, All right, so I'm just going to bring this clip in, right, along with the sound. So what's happening right now is there's still stuff coming out of this sequence over here. If I were to randomize these, kind of coming across this particular sound this squeaky bell is coming coming out almost like a, like a cowbell it wasn't really my intention but this is a good example of how just messing around with these creative extensions tools can generate something just kind of inspiring because I'm kind of now got this cowbell pattern that's not so patternized right I've got this straight drum beat over here I'm just gonna disable that for a sec so you can hear after you listen to this drum beat, yeah, it's a cool drum beat, but it's the same loop over and over again, right? If I were to go ahead and, well, just by having the melodic steps along with these chance variables, I'm getting a different pattern each time because the chance is changing basically the, the sound of this cowbell. But I could also take this melodic steps and put it onto my drums, right? And then I'm going to enable uh, MIDI down here. So let's just take a look at what it says there. I got two. So playback is only active when a MIDI note is being held. Therefore, the MIDI note determines the root note of the sequencer. So I think if I'm playing this clip, I'm going to turn off my metronome. So I've, I've enabled MIDI. Now basically what is coming out of my MIDI clip is now being processed by the melodic steps. Now I'm getting these probability arrangements on there. If I switch MIDI off, I'm it's just generating MIDI. Is it creating a MIDI message that's going into that uh, sound? And now if I take my drums over here and I disable melodic steps, you know, get my original beat. I've got this cowbell that's totally uh, fresh every time around. Every time that loop comes around, I get something slightly different because of the chance. So it, it just grooves a lot more. And if I put the melodic steps on, let's see. I just, not getting exactly the result I was hoping for. 
I kind of like what I have back here before because the um, the chance um, of probability here generating basically this cowbell sound is adding the kind of thing I'm always so desperate to find in my beats is something I can perform against where my beats are constantly staying fresh and new. They're not just falling into some kind of static pattern that never stops. Right. So um, let's say that I were to leave this gated delay on. I'm getting very interesting sounds there. I'm going to bring down the wet, just adding a little bit of interest and character through this gated delay. In this context, I don't think I want the spectral ambience on there. So if we look at kind of what they, what they're um, offering in this creative extensions collection, the melodic steps is a MIDI sequencer, but it's really designed for creating evolving and uh, interest. Let's check out this pitch hack because that has some also also some very cool um, qualities going on. So let's say that I take all of these groups. I'm gonna I'm gonna take all of these plugins here. I've selected them all, and I'm going to hit Command G on my Mac to to group them together so that they're all here under this one device chain. And now I'm going to duplicate that device chain so that I have two of exactly the same thing. But on the second device chain, I am going to get rid of the spectral ambience and the gated delay. Um, actually, what I will do is I will put the melodic sequencer in advance here. I'm going to take the melodic steps out uh, of both of these device chains. So I've got one original sequence, but it's going into these two chains, right? And actually I'm gonna take the instrument. Yeah, no, I'll do that. I'll just leave the instrument in there. But on this uh, one right here, I'm gonna add that pitch hack. So this is going to be, let's see, creative extensions and audio effects, there's my pitch hack. I'm gonna grab that and bring that down here. So now I've got one device chain that is my original uh, with the gated delay and the spectral ambience, although I'm not using it. I could probably just delete it. And then this one's got pitch hack and let's listen to what this is doing, right? So I'm gonna just solo this device chain here and listen to, uh, let's, let's, Bring this up um, a perfect fifth, right? And I'm going to bring up the dry and wet. you can hear how there's a sound that's being kind of like superimposed this is the original kind of cowbell sound and with the pitch hack but I can decide how to blend it right so I can have a con it's, it's not that it has to change the whole device chains output I can blend So this pitch hack device definitely has artifacts in it. So I find that I often want to pro either have it in the background or pretty heavily processed so that it doesn't, um, it doesn't kind of ruin, I don't know, I, I don't want it to sound too, uh, too, I don't want the artifacts to be too present most of the time, right? Maybe sometimes I'm working on something that's supposed to sound really digitized. 
but the pitch hack device definitely produces a lot of artifacts so I usually kind of add it in rather small amounts rather tame amounts um, so that's that's an example of pitch hack gate of delay we've done color limiter oh yeah the re-enveloper let's check this out so let's go back to uh, my drums here and what I'm going to do is add the re-enveloper here after my drums. So if I were to, if, I, if I'm trying to figure out how to set this spectrum, right? Like uh, what is my spectral, you know, what is between 1K and 5K and so on and so forth, then using a spectrum device can actually be a, a really good tool here. So I'm gonna go to utilities and add spectrum, right? and then I can open that up here. So this gives me an idea of exactly what kind of range I'm dealing with. So you can see like little numbers up here. You can see 100, 1K, so on and so forth, 10K. So um, you can also see in the lower right-hand corner here, it's telling me where, where I am in terms of a MIDI pitch in terms of uh, level, of gain level in dB, and then in terms of um, actual hertz. So as I move up here, you know, if I, I'm seeing this peak over here, I can just mouse over it, and then I can see in the lower left corner that that's around five kilohertz. It's D sharp seven, and it's I'm where my mouse happens to be is minus 33. So let's say that I wanted to take that uh, peak right there. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this peak right here. Let's say that I wanted to take that and use the re-enveloper to um, to put a little uh, change the envelope of that particular frequency range. So that's around 5k. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to um, bring this up like that. Okay, so now I'm looking at my at my B level, and I'm going to soften the attack on that. Now I'm not going to see a change in the spectrum because the spectrum is prior to the re-enveloper, right? So uh, the re-enveloper obviously isn't affecting the signal coming into my spectrum, but I can hear it. I'm going to turn, uh, I, I've softened the attack a lot. So right now I'm using this compression expansion factor knob to manipulate the envelope around that specific frequency. And I can definitely hear a sonic change. Right, so this is... before re-enveloper and after. So I guess uh, if you turn all these off, it's not like you get the clear, like you, you don't get the original signal. But it's definitely giving me the opportunity to manipulate. This is kind of a more even sound now I've definitely accented that particular sound just by finding it in my spectrum and then using re-enveloper to target that frequency range here using these split one and two and then manipulating that appropriate um, frequency range using re-enveloper. Out of curiosity, I want to see if I change this. What do I get? So I'm still getting a peak there a little bit more of a peak. But that's killing it. You can see that like that same peak, I, I brought that down a lot with the con compression and expansion factor. Whereas if when I bring this up, that specific frequency range is really being heavily impacted. You can even see how it's peaking right here and turning red on. 
So this compression expansion is not compressing and expanding the signal in the way that a compressor or expander typically does with, with regards to uh, dynamics level, volume level, um, but compressing and expanding the envelope. So re-envelope are a very handy tool for manipulating specific frequency ranges. If you had a drum, uh, like a drum pattern, let's say, and you really liked the beat, uh, it's an audio file. You can't go in and manipulate uh, specific instruments, but you wanted to kind of rebalance maybe some of the instruments. You wanted to maybe uh, bring up the kick in there. You wanted to emphasize the snare while bringing down the hi-hats. When you've got a signal like that that's got a, a lot of uh, different elements happening in the in the frequency range, in the frequency spectrum, the audible spectrum, then re-enveloper gives you um, a very valuable tool for rebalancing the distribution of sound across those different frequencies. So very cool, very interesting there. Uh, let's just see if we left anything out of the list. I didn't really look at the instruments. Um, bass and poly, you know, I'm, I'm going to leave that up to you guys. I'm sure that uh, everybody's got lots of synths, but if you want to check them out, you can. So re-enveloper, I didn't use the color limiter. Uh, that, you know, I, I don't think, I don't know, I don't think of that as really being th that innovative. Um, but these other ones really are interesting. Let's just take some quick listens to some of their samples. So probably elements here, certainly relying on melodic steps, probably even pitch hack. The gated delay, that pad sound is probably coming from this spectral blur, maybe automating spectral blur's uh, controls. Maybe even automating re-enveloper can create some, some really interesting textures over time. Let's listen to this one. So definitely melodic, the melodic steps here, probably creating that sort of malady sequence sound maybe even using the pitch hack in there to create octaves that that that's definitely an interesting sound that could be coming from the gated delay combined with a spectral blur and I think it really gets to, uh, you know, one of the interesting things about this pack is that you can actually do your composition with these effects. It's not, these are not like your bread and butter effects, compressor EQ or something where you're using them to like fix a problem or, you know, add flanging or phasing or something. They actually are becoming the melodic elements, the harmonic elements, the musical building blocks for your track and I think that's that's where I would recommend you come to this creative extensions pack to to kind of see that so uh, looks like everything's good and uh, thank you so much for watching if you like this video please subscribe and if you have packs you'd like me to look at please post them in the comments or message me because uh, I want to know what's important and valuable to all y'all so uh, that's it on this pack creative extensions definitely check it out relatively modern coming from ableton 10 and uh coming up on friday this week i will be back again and we'll look at something else new all right till next time see you later